sure you hit the red subscribe button and click the notification bell so that you can be notified every time I upload a new craft video. sharing with you how to make an adorable embroidery hoop wreath. So you might be asking yourself, what is that exactly? Well, it's a wreath for your door or anywhere you want to hang in your home, but it's actually made out of fabric. And I have one right here that I am going to show you how to create. So this is a look at the finished embroidery hoop. It is actually made out of a wooden hoop that you can pick up at your local craft store. You can actually stain the wood to a color that you desire to go with your home's decor and you can create these for year round or for the seasons and the holidays. Up to um, around the holidays that just passed, I actually made a several of these and gifted them to friends and family, and they absolutely love them. So you can definitely personalize these any way that you see fit, and you can make them fit your home or the seasons. So I'm gonna flip the camera around and show you how to make an embroidery hoop wreath. So let's get started. Okay, so to get started, you'll want to get an embroidery hoop. You can actually get these from any local craft store and they come in a variety of sizes. You're also going to need some fabric and some floral picks and then a word if you'd like to heat press a word like the word welcome onto the middle or the center of your fabric in your embroidery hoop wreath. I actually have the word welcome in my resource library at craftylifemom.com. It's free to subscribers and it's free to subscribe if you would like to download that word and cut it with your Cricut or Silhouette machine. So to get started, what you're going to want to do here is just measure out how much fabric you're going to need. Since the embroidery hoops come in a variety of sizes as small as two and three inches, like an ornament size, all the way up to 18, 22, and even 24 inches, you're going to want to see how much fabric you will need. And I just kind of cut off a big section of fabric, a big square, and made sure that I had enough fabric that would allow for an overhang. And the reason this you want this is because you want to be able to pull your fabric tight in the embroidery hoop. You can always cut off the excess and I'll show you here in just a moment what we will do with the part that overhangs. Now before I actually put my fabric into the embroidery hoop, I like to make sure that it's nice and pressed and I just use the Cricut Easy Press to iron out the fabric and get out any wrinkles and creases. You'll want to do this because once you put it in the hoop, any little wrinkle that you have, if there's any kind of slack in your fabric, it will show. You can always go back and fix it, but if you can do it ahead of time, even better. So then to put the fabric into the hoop, you'll want to put the ring, the wooden ring, underneath the fabric um, piece. And you can see here, I'm just measuring where I want the word to go, and then looking at it with the hoop, seeing how much it's going to be hanging over. Once I pencil marked it into place, I took the hoop piece out and laid my fabric back down flat again and then pressed my word welcome onto my fabric. So that's why you see me flipping this back and forth here. It's because I was measuring it and wanted to make sure I kind of had it nice and center. I decided to actually press the word welcome in the bottom lower third section of the embroidery hoop. And I'm sorry I didn't get it fully on camera here, but that's why it's kind of low. I didn't want it quite centered. I kind of wanted it a little bit below center, if that makes sense. So I just used the heat Easy Press by Cricut and pressed the word into place 
and then just peeled back the transfer tape and then uh, just folded the fabric down just to kind of press that word into place. You can easily use a uh, sheet, uh, a transfer sheet or something like that. So once I had the fabric and my word pressed where I wanted it, I measured it again with the hoop and then started lining it up on top of the wooden piece that does not have the tightening bolt. So you wanna do the solid piece on the bottom. And then you will take the upper ring that has the bolt there, which you can see, and put that down on top and line it up as best as you can and then you will secure it down over the fabric. So you'll wanna make sure that the bolt is loose enough that it will actually slip down over top of the other wooden ring, but then not too loose that the fabric slips out. Then you will want to make sure that it's tightened all the way around and tighten the bolt at the top. But be careful here that you don't tighten it too much and that you split the wood at top because I have done that before and that's not cool. You'll have to glue it or secure it or get an all new hoop altogether. So once you have that done, you'll wanna go ahead and cut the corners off, which you can see I've done here. And then using hot glue, I just took the fabric and glued the inside of the wooden ring and folded it over bit by bit all the way around. Now you can certainly cut off more fabric than I did here. I like to have a little bit of extra fabric and try to pull it tight as I go. Um, I'm not perfect at this and in fact in this wreath I could have actually pulled it a little bit tighter. Just be careful that you don't cut too much fabric and that you don't burn your fingers when you are gluing this on the edge. Once you have all of the areas glued all the way around, it will look something like this. And like I said, if you make a little buckle, which you can see I have a little one there, you'll wanna go back and actually tighten that down. That just makes it look a little bit better. Once that part is done, then you'll wanna start adding some, adding some greenery or flowers or even ribbons and bows to the top of your wreath. So right here, I'm just playing around, laying out with what I have on hand and seeing what will look best. This is just a boxwood, a uh, few branches that I had from a wreath that I kind of pulled apart and these little pieces were just left over that I didn't use from another project. So I thought they'd be really pretty just kind of poking out the top there behind some flowers and a nice burlap ribbon type bow. So I kind of like it to curve downward around the wreath circle and that's just to kind of give it a little bit of look but you can certainly do it however you want to. And once you kind of have an idea of where you want everything to go, you can start hot gluing. And so for this, I don't really have any kind of method. I just basically put a hunk of hot glue down onto the fabric and put those branches into place. Just be careful that you don't burn your fingers because that glue can be hot. And I just kind of like mash them down with the scissors to kind of keep it secured there. Once the glue sets, you'll be better off going back and gluing it down a little bit more on top, but in the beginning you just kind of have to glue it to the fabric and work with it as you go and as the glue dries. So you can see here that's just kind of what I'm doing. All of um, these branches or greenery like this you can find at the Dollar Tree. You can also find them at Walmart or any local craft shop. So the flowers I had, they actually came from the Dollar Tree and so did this burlap ribbon. And normally I do different kinds of bows, but today I decided to do a three-sided bow or a bow that has three loops on each side, which I started to do here. If you'd like to see a tutorial on how I made the bow, just leave a comment down below and I will be happy to do a tutorial on how I made this bow. I actually learned this from a lady who came to one of our church craft nights and ever since I learned how to make them, I really enjoy having these bows and making them for different projects around my home. So if you'd like to see that tutorial, just leave a comment down below and I'd be happy to show you guys how to do it. So this is pretty much the end of the bow here and I'm just taking a pipe cleaner to kind of secure all of the loops into place and then I'm just twisting it and basically going to cut off the excess 
parts of the pipe cleaner and then I will cut the tails on this bow and actually glue it down into the center in between the two flowers there. I did have to go back and remove the flowers to get the bow to fit because it was a little bit bigger than the space I allowed for. So if you are making a bow, just make sure that you keep that in mind when you are creating this because you'll want to make sure you have enough space for everything to kind of center up nicely there. I also like having a bow like this because it hides the hinge part of the embroidery hoop at the very top. You can't really tell that this is an embroidery hoop. I mean you can but you can't really see the hinge and the wooden blocks at the very top there which I kind of like to have hidden so that's just something I wanted to point out. You can just see right here that I'm actually finally securing the bow into place and then I am just gluing it right there to the center. You can see how I removed those flowers like I was telling you. So you'll want to glue it down into place and then kind of fluff the bow and then go back and add those flowers, which I will show you here in just a minute exactly how I did that. And I made sure that when I cut the ribbon tails, I kind of did the inverted V there. I just love the way that that looks. So I typically always have that cut on any bow that I make, even if it's this kind of bow or another style bow, which is a little bit more um, like farmhouse. But I just really like making these bows lately. And so that's what I chose for this wreath. You can certainly do any kind of bow that you want. Here's a final look of the embroidery hoop wreath. I really love the way it turned out. You can see a wrinkle there which I'll need to fix, but I really love the way this looks with my home. Okay guys, so I hope you really enjoyed this craft and DIY. And like I said, you can go and get those hoops from most of your local craft stores. I will also put some links down below where you can order them. And if you have any questions about this project, feel free to leave some comments down below. Send me a message. I'm always happy to help you find a way to create. I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.